welcome back for another episode of the FRW podcast. So in the last episode, we kept it light with an introduction of the creators and innovators of the company, Mike and Alyssa, and we asked them all sorts of questions about the development of the business and the journey they took to get where they are today. But in this episode, we thought we'd address an issue that is sadly very much present in our society. This issue is cyberbullying. And for today, we have two special guests with us. We have Allie and Celeste. Hi, ladies. How are you today? Hello. (laughs) Pretty good. (laughs) So they're going to help us keep the conversation going. So uh, what do you guys think the definition of cyberbullying is? We'll start off with Allie. Um, I think cyberbullying is when you're on an online platform and you're getting harassed or teased or taunted and it's, you know, that unwanted attention. Yeah, what about you, Celeste? When somebody's hating behind a screen, <laughs> but they don't want to hate in person, you know? <laughs> yeah, they're too, uh, you know, into themselves to do it in person. They don't want to say anything yeah. in person. They hide behind the screen. What do you think about this, Alyssa? I think that cyberbullying is a really sad part of our society now, and um, it's hurtful. And people, like Celeste said, they hide behind their screens <laughs> and they throw hate and they, they find a way or a reason to say something negative or mean to someone, a brand, a person, um, whoever it is, just because you know they can they're not afraid of the, the consequences because nobody knows who they are in person, so it's just their way of kind of blowing off steam, I guess. In an unhealthy way. In a un- very unhealthy, negative way. And last but certainly not least, what do you think about this, Mike? Cyberbullying is, is like a pathological uh, release for the perpetrator. You know, it is a indication that they are doing something um, or feeling something and they have found a outlet for it but that it's not necessarily the most healthy for society as a whole. You guys pretty much all nailed it on the head. The Webster's definition for cyberbullying is the use of electronic communication to bully a person typically by sending messages of an intimidating or threatening nature. So obviously this is super negative. Um, do you guys have any strategies for combating this global issue? We'll just go around the circle again, starting with Allie. Um, honestly, it depends on the day. Like, some days I just feel like <laughs> popping off and not taking anyone's shit. And then some days I'm like, you know what? Don't stoop to their level. Just ignore it, block and move on. But I don't know. I feel like there's some days when you're already having a bad day and then someone just decides to go off on you for no reason and it is like satisfying in that moment you know go off on them back (laughs) but I know I think probably the healthiest way is to just block it move on and not take it too personal but I don't know sometimes it's fun to have that release (laughs) (laughs) they really deserve it Allie how frequently are you dealing with cyberbullying being an influencer in the scene yeah um I mean honestly I feel like I used to pay attention to it a lot more so I feel like I used to feel like I was getting hated on a lot but I feel like recently I just decided to you know try and not even look at it and focus on the positive comments instead of the negative so I think that I'm probably getting cyberbullied the same amount but I think I'm just not noticing it as much because I'm not paying attention to it but yeah it's like prevalent like people will like Celeste was saying like they'll hide behind a screen and they'll, you know, do it for the most dumb reasons, like they'll be jealous of you or they'll, you know, just... Insecure. Yeah, they'll be insecure and they just, like, feel like they have the right to just go off on you online because you put yourself out there online, so they feel like they have the right to say whatever they want, so it is really, really prevalent, sadly, but, yeah. What do you, what do you think about that, Celeste? Have you... Well, when people comment, like, I try to be positive and, like, I try not to roast them, you know, but I feel like the best way is just to delete it. Sometimes I want to just, like, you know, get in there, Stir it you up know? a little. <laughs> but my friend's like, no, Celeste, I got you. And then I just, you know, ignore it. <laughs> have, you, uh, have you any advice on the combating? 
Alyssa? It's definitely difficult to deal with cyberbullying um, as a brand. We get it a lot, so it's a little bit different from Celeste and Allie, who are models and influencers. Um, they're getting a variety, you know, a variety of different comments. We get them on our page too. We get people who are just vulgar mm -hmm. and disgusting, and it's like. You know, just because our models are showing their bodies that they're proud of and that they have, you know, respect for and self love, um, it doesn't mean that, you know, gross guys or girls should be able to make disgusting and, and inappropriate comments. And usually mm -hmm. when we get those, like, they get deleted yeah. immediately because we just don't have room for that. But when people are rude and mean for no reason, that's something that is very difficult for me to deal with as a brand because you know I want to either defend our models immediately and be like you know you guys don't know what you're talking about you don't know these people they're kind uh, loving like generous people and, and they have self-respect just because they have nice bodies and their butts are out a little bit like it's not you know it's the scene it's the culture it's it's now it's it's pride and it's okay that um, women are are proud of their bodies and show them off. So it's hard for me when people are just downright mean because you know we're also in this in the EDM scene where it's plur. Yeah. Like yeah. you know you ex you should have all, like love and respect across your platforms and and when you get negative comments, I always I you know my my initial reaction is like oh <laughs> yeah like here, here's yeah mom bear like I yeah. want to protect our brand and what we've built and the girls that you know we love and care about. And um, so it's tough for me. I, I typically do not engage. Mike is my <laughs> cooler head and helps me prevail in that way. <laughs> but there has definitely been some times where I'm like, okay, that's enough. Um, and the other really cool thing about being a brand is people, our, our fans and like our customers tend to like defend before I even have to, mm -hmm. which yeah. is cool. Cause yeah. you know, there is that, that like positive, positive light out there that's gonna come in and be like, whoa, you." Why? Why are you being like this? Like, this is a, a loving space and stuff. So, that's where I sit on the issue. Yes, definitely. Very good it's advice. a tough one. It's yeah. a tough one. Yeah. How about you, Mike? The. It's funny because also when you say that about how we wait for our customers or like an audience to come back, it's almost like the conscience that the person should have had or expressed prior to uh, making the comment mm -hmm. is represented through the community so mm -hmm. we rely on a, a little Jiminy Cricket <laughs> yeah, a, little, a little consciousness to maybe be clapped back um, yeah. as a much safer way for us to do it as a brand uh, rather than to uh, openly you know come out but I also know that there are, there are a lot of other brands who have kind of found a nook and cranny and being able to troll back to Wendy's yeah, Wendy's is <laughs> oh, yeah. so, so mean on Twitter and I'd be interested to see just I, I wish that I could uh, sort of um, tap into a, a current of um, like positive consciousness that would be effective mm -hmm. and help you know sort of shape people's minds to maybe be a little more kind when they're commenting but it's also it seems and maybe this is just like apath apathy on my end it seems like there's no point in trying to change someone's mind online when they've made the comment yeah. because a message received at the wrong time might as well not be sent yeah. yeah. So I don't know if it's our job to try and, you know, shape that person's mind. Because ultimately the cause of the comment is something beyond our reach. You know, it's something about their environment. It's something about the day that they've had. And that's where I end up getting a little twisted when we try to find a strategy. You know, we've been trying to develop a strategy for trolls for a long time. <laughs> yeah. And, like, and, like a set. This is, know, our, this is these are our do. principles. Yeah. And it's hard to because the, the comments come in so many forms. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think definitely for combating this issue, I really love the whole movement of body, body positivity that, you know, the yes queen, like yes. girls just like <laughs> promoting each other, like through all of that and all the really positive reinforcement that everyone's been giving each other that really kind of overshadows the cyberbullying because, you know, that wasn't really a thing. Like the body positivity wasn't mm -hmm. prevalent online until, you know, like a year ago maybe. And um, I really think that's definitely helped girls to like gain back their confidence and men mm -hmm. and people of like all walks of life. Um, but according to a few websites I found, um, this one website, ditchthelabel.org, 
They have both a UK version and a US version, and they express nine tips for overcoming cyberbullying. Um, I have a few of them written down here. The first is to never respond. Don't fuel the fire. As hard as it may seem sometimes, you know, you just want to pop off, you just tell them what's up. It's better to just not respond because you have to remember it's not about you. It's about them and their insecurities because they're just trying to attack you to bring you down to their level. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, if you don't respond, then, you know, you're not, you're not coming down. You're not stooping. And then another is to take a screenshot just to keep a record of it in case it gets worse <laughs> and <laughs> to show people, you know, that this person is spouting off negativity and to report and block that person if need be usually it's a good idea and to talk about it with loved ones you know don't keep it bottled up because people are here to support you you don't want it to to overtake you on the inside and like let it just fester in your brain and then eventually you know you might pop off to someone <laughs> randomly because you didn't talk about it um but can you guys think back to any specific times where you bear witness to cyberbullying or it was it was specifically done to you, something that's just, like, really stuck in your mind, Allie? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like there's just so many <laughs> that um, it's hard to choose just one. But I think the most recent one that uh, really has stuck with me is a couple of months ago, there was this post from a prevalent EDM page. and um, Which page? Um, I don't know, are we gonna, are we gonna say names? Are we gonna go? <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> but, okay, like, well, I mean, the SoCal EDM events post where he posted a picture, and it was just text, and it said, I'm sick of seeing the same ten girls on every single rave page. And the post, that post itself, like, wasn't really inflammatory, but people took it as an opportunity to single out specific girls in the rave community in the comments. And for me, like, I remember this one girl, she was just saying like, oh, it, it's to the point where um, every time I see like a post about Ali, like I just, I hate it. Like I, I don't want to see it or whatever. I'm like, all right, damn. And it's funny <laughs> because um, she didn't like follow me or anything, but I noticed she was watching every single one of my stories oh, cool. every single day, which means that she had to like manually go to my profile and see if I posted a story and look at it. And so like, I was just like so confused because you know, she's claiming, oh, I hate seeing Ali everywhere like it makes me like sick to see her and then yet yeah, she's she's the one going to my page every single day because I'm not exaggerating every single story post she was the top person that was listed that saw it and like one day I just posted my story I was like you know what girl like uh, I see you and I know that you have an issue or whatever but you know like, you might as well make it easier for yourself and just hit that follow button and she <laughs> <laughs> and she actually like she really surprised me because she took it upon herself to message me and was like you know what I know that your story was probably about me because I do remember making those comments about you a couple months ago and I just want to say like it came from a place of insecurity and she was like big enough to admit like you know you're what I want to look like like and she even said like I will go to girls pages that I feel like are better than me, that I want to look like as inspiration. And that kind of like really like broke my heart. And I took the opportunity to tell her like, you know what, I'm sorry for coming about it the wrong way. I didn't mean to, you know, attack you or any way. And it, I turned to like a whole conversation about like how to love yourself better and how to, you know, accept like your flaws and like build that self-love. So that's like a, a cyber bullying, I guess, instance yeah, that really sticks definitely. out to me. because worked out for the better and now we like follow each other and everything is cool now but I think it just like is really exemplatory, exemplatory <laughs> that you know cyberbull is like nine times out of ten or like anyone who's trying to be a hater bring you down like you said it comes from a, pay, a place of insecurity and it says more about them than it does you. So. That sounds like the ideal situation. Yeah, yeah no, definitely. That's, <laughs> that's so yeah, well. that's why it, like definitely like sticks out to me. And I, like I give her so much props for being you know woman enough to message me first and be like you know what it's it's my own insecurities. Like I wasn't meaning to hate on you, but I don't know. I feel like the world would be a better place if everyone could just have like that open conversation instead of you know taking their feelings out on you. But it doesn't always work that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely. for sure. That's a pretty good story. Yeah. 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 I'll make it pass. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Allie, turn it around. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Alyssa. <laughs> um, Bar- Barclay? No, I think, well, a story that sticks out to me, too, is when that other girl was cyberbullying me. Yeah. And you took it upon yourself to reach out to her. And she, the same thing, she broke down and was like, oh, it's, it's because I'm not popping off on my, yeah. like, oh, And I think yeah. that the thing with cyberbullying, you know, it's, it's so sad because exactly like your story you know most of the people as far as girls go I think guys are a little bit more vicious and kind of just like cold-hearted because sorry babe (laughs) Um, but I think that (laughs) death stares over here Um, I think that for girls you know that's the big part of our brand is we want to push self-love yeah and we want to push like you know you're beautiful and whatever whatever you wear whatever you look like whether you work out 50 times a day or you haven't worked out in three years like me um, (laughs) you know it's like you got to love yourself and you got to if we can all promote positivity and love to you you know even the people that throw hate um, hopefully that makes the world a better place maybe you know it's only a very small percentage of people that we impact but if we're impacting anyone at all I think that that's a positive thing Um, Mike I guess I've never really, as far as guys go, guys that cyber bully you are usually, I would say especially for you guys as models, it, they're usually just disgusting. Oh, yeah. it's, like, it's slut oh, shaming for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. slut shaming. That's what guys that. always go to. Yeah. Like, they are like, oh, like, they feel like they have the right to make comments about your body, positive or negative, yes. because you're putting it online. And right. then when you try to confront them about it, they're like, well, it's your fault for putting your body out there. Like, you yeah. stupid slut. Like, what do you yeah. say? <laughs> I'm just like, whoa. Wow. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess that's probably from a, a small place of insecurity as well. Like, if you're yeah. just jealous that, you know, you aren't with a girl with yeah. that kind of body or, like, you know, you don't have the intelligence and <laughs> suave you know to get Don't someone like that but yeah what do you think mike i'm curious yes when it comes to the because I, I look at everything in categories i think of the category of pe- women who attack other women mm-hmm. for x reason and let's say that reason is the the insecurity or the idolization of the person they're actually attacking some sort of weird psychological obsession, obsession <laughs> that 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 particular category you know juxtaposed with the category of um the guy who is slut shaming like yeah. we'll focus on one of them for the girl it seems as though the fo- if if the intent if their if their true objective deep down is to be like the person who is an influencer maybe they want to have more followers they want to have more of a of a impact with an audience that their focus is entirely placed in the wrong arena yeah. and that they need to rather than focus on the um, tangible what's visible aspects of the of social media the page the followers the impressions that they need to do a lot more in refocusing their efforts on a strategy, a digital marketing strategy that requires effort, not just a satisfaction of an emotional state or a type of frustration that is then expressed or at least eased when they attack someone else and it lets them be okay with spending one more day not responding to their comments and not giving love to their audience and not building their brand because that takes effort and it yeah. takes effort over a period of time and yeah. if you can't do that for a period of time you can't expect to get anywhere in the in the digital space um, if, if that is what your objective is if your objective isn't that and you find yourself still doing it um, and it sounds like it's probably something from like your childhood that you got. Yeah, <laughs> you've got deep you got, rooted you issues. Got really you got mean girl in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, like, and you should probably find a support network to, you know, learn how to express yourself differently. And I think that Freedom Rave would be a great place to start because we've got some awesome fans. Yeah. Um, so that, there's that person. And then I'll keep it short on the guy part because it's funny. <laughs> I think that, I mean, I am no way a voice for all men, but the guy who is attacking another woman because of a slut shaming or a a desire to like express some type of power over somebody Mm. else is really misguided effort in in, and and i don't know how much sexual 
like frustration is a part of that, <laughs> but probably, big part. probably yeah, a part of it, you know, maybe like find, go to the gym or maybe like read more or study something about culture and learn how to create positive connections because you're not going to get anywhere in life if you think that it is a valuable al- allocation of time to be attacking other women. Like, bro, go hustle, hustle hard. I helped build a company with my main lady so that she thought I had enough value in her life. (laughs) That's doing work, you know? So go out and get some and have some fun, but like build yourself up, like get some skills, do something. There's so much to learn. Why are you spending time attacking somebody else? Like spread love, that doesn't help anything. And over time, it actually just is a corruption of your own personal integrity, so. Yeah, Mm. Yeah, because you start talking to people and- Snaps for you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because if you only know how to degrade women on social media, what are you going to be like when you actually meet them in person? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know? I'm not going to have any skills. Oh, yeah. Skill and yeah. culture yourself. Oh, good. Yes, I definitely want to hang out with you now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, because then, cause then if you do act nor- like a normal human being in front of the person, and you also have behind that, that veil that type of corruption, now you're lying to yourself, and you are not what you're representing yourself to be. Over time, I think that's expressed as some type of like psychological disorder like they never grew out of third grade like pulling the girl's hair oh yeah (laughs) if if you like her be nice to her (laughs) yeah mike if you like her be nice i'm just (laughs) you're so sweet i can think of one instance that was actually really really bad Um, my first ever edc this poor girl had i actually witnessed it in person and i saw it online later um this girl was like on something and she had taken off all of her clothes and she was not very in shape so um my friend my friend Tirza and I my very best friend we're just like walking around we saw this girl and we were both like didn't know like if if she just was okay because like she was just wandering around naked and people were taking pictures of her and so we took it upon ourselves to like go over there and we were like shielding her body from people and one of her friends I don't know if it's her friend or a sister or something screams comes charges over and like just drapes her blanket over her and like they took her away but I saw several people put it on um on like feeds on various platforms like oh this bitch is fucked up like all this horrible stuff i was just like oh my god like we are at plur city like this is where love and respect is supposed to happen you guys are making fun of not only making fun of in person but like taking it upon yourself to post about it and mm-hmm. spread, that, and spread negativity. that negativity. I I reported everyone I found. I was just like, wow, you guys, like, this poor girl was lost, you know, like, that's just, so I, mean. like, broke my heart. Yeah. It was just, like, god-awful to witness, like, whoever thought it would be funny to make fun of this girl struggling who probably doesn't even know where she was at that point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And probably won't remember it the next day. Yeah. That's sad. It was really sad. That's, like, the only time that really sticks out for me, I think. But, God, I hope that never happens again. I was yeah. so sad. I think that if we all, you know, take it upon ourselves when we see people that are struggling, you know, especially in person like mm-hmm. that, you know, to help and help them with whatever they need. You know, people do things at music festivals and need help often, you know. <laughs> so don't don't let someone struggle or don't let someone walk around lost and naked and make fun of them, you know, help them. Like, there's no no need for that, no room for that. No, not at all. Someone's dehydrated, you help them with water. Yes. Someone's taking their clothes off, you shield <laughs> them. <laughs> Someone's tripping out, explain to them it's gonna be okay. <laughs> like, you're I fine. feel so nice doing that at festivals. That's also my favorite thing is to like yeah. go out and help people because I feel like Yes, like I affected someone in a positive way besides just going to a festival. Yeah. It's like more fun to me. Definitely. I always like make a bunch of bracelets to trade them, but I always just give them all away because oh, yes. I <laughs> see people with no bracelets. I'm like, take it! <laughs> I don't need it. I just spend hours making these. Just, I want yeah. to have them. Yeah. Because they have a little piece of you forever. Exactly. <laughs> I remember every single candy, like who I got it from, like where I got it from. It's That's such nice. It's souvenir. Extremely impressive, Celeste. Like, very <laughs> impressive. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> So a few websites, besides the one I already mentioned, that you can visit for support, advice, 
people to help you out for cyberbullying is pacer.org, americanspcc.org, and stopbullying.gov, and the last, bestrong.global. So if you guys ever have any issues, you want some support, obviously like reach out to your friends and your loved ones but if you want a community or if you need a professional to talk to or something like that these websites and much much more are available for you online 24 7 so please please don't hesitate and if you need that help just really reach out for it so do you guys have any other two cents on the subject anything you want to leave the audience with just be nice, you know, spread love, because it's like so, everywhere you look, there's so much hate, like political parties and people that don't agree with other people's views, and like, we just need to fight it with love, I feel like, no matter the issue, not just with the EDC community, EDM community, just everywhere in all parts of our life, I feel yeah. like. Because not everyone's going to agree with you yeah. all the time. People are allowed to have different points <laughs> of view. Just don't make it negative can't be negative just always try to remain positive as much as you can mike i know you probably have some thoughts <laughs> slam, slam us with some wisdom here <laughs> leave us with wisdom wisdom uh yeah the the main thing for whether you, whether you're on the receiving end or you might yourself be trolling you know we all have that <laughs> so that desire that passion to like express ourselves and sometimes that that energy isn't positive and so being self-aware of your state of mind while you are on social media is really important so that you don't find yourself accidentally um, or unintentionally becoming a part of the larger problem. So know if you are having a bad t a bad day, if you you know are almost going to get set off, maybe you know find some headspace, uh, go work out, do something before you get you enable yourself to be triggered by something that really shouldn't trigger you. Uh, so if you're, you know, you, because we could all, you know, all of us have that ability, we're human. Um, we can express ourselves in good ways, we can express ourselves in bad ways. And self-awareness for, uh, for, for any action is really going to be um, key in determining, am I actually applying myself to get where I want to go? We're in, we're living, we have goals, we have objectives. If you don't have goals or objectives, start doing stuff, start creating goals and objectives. And, uh, and, and that should get you closer to where you want to go so that you um, really become the person you want to be as opposed to letting the whims and winds of you know, 2018 and this current social climate dictate who you are. You should decide who you're going to be. So. Thank you yes. so much, Mike. <laughs> so enlightening. <laughs> So thank you guys so much for tuning in to this very important episode of FRW Podcast. In future episodes, tell us what you want to hear, yo. Just hit us up. Anything specific, anything broad, just reach out to us and we would be happy to cover any topics that you guys would love to hear. So this is us signing off. Thank you guys for joining us today. Yay, thank you thank for you. Having us. Woo! Episode two. <laughs> Until <laughs> next time. Of course.